Hello and welcome back to Hairsport.ie, Ireland's only media platform dedicated solely to women in sport. My name is Alana Canan, this is Hairsport TV, and today we are delighted to be joined by the Women's Rowing Four of Africo, Emer Lam, Fiona Marta, and Emma he- Emily Hegarty. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, thanks a lot thanks for having us. Nice. So I suppose the last year has meant different things for everybody. So in preparation with that extra time, do you think that was of benefit to you guys, Emer? Um, Definitely, yeah. Considering like we're a relatively fairly young crew, I think having that extra year to like get a bit more experience. um, Like I'd only been down in Cork a year coming up for qualifiers and everything. Um, Fiona was new enough as well. So just having that extra time together and to get it up and running, I think, yeah, definitely was an advantage for us. Yeah, um, would uh, all of you as a whole, like, say, maybe, like, I know, like, you would have probably been, uh, of everybody, expected to qualify out of all the Rome crews, let's say. Do you, did you feel that burden? And do you think it um, made you, like, excel as a team? Or was it more just, like, kind of conscious of it, but let's not really play into that? Um, well, I think, like, uh, we just took confidence in it. Like, I suppose there was a reason why everyone thought we were going to qualify. Like, we were going fast and we were getting good times in training. So that just for us was like a good confidence boost. And we knew we were capable of doing it. And kind of like we said at the time, like, we are capable. It's just whether, you know, something went wrong or we were unfortunate. And if anything, yeah, it did go wrong, that would cause an upset. Um, we knew we were more than capable. We had the ability to qualify. Uh, it was just about, yeah, actually getting the job done yeah and when you did go on to that then would you say it was a relief or it was just like pure ecstatic feeling like I know like to do it the way you did as well had to be a a great feeling yeah definitely and especially considering like it had been so long coming you know we had an extra year on whether like the uncertainty of it so I think kind of once it was certain and once we crossed the line and we had qualified you know it really like brought into perspective all the work we've done over the past two years since missing out yeah, and then um, now the race, even before that, you talk of gaining confidence. You made headlines there in the A final of the European Championships. Um, I suppose that was another kind of thing that gave you confidence. I know the Dutch Pippi to the top spot, but coming in ahead of like Team GB, that had to be a great kind of confidence booster going into the business end of the qualification. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely a confidence boost. Um, but we're very competitive with ourselves. We're always trying to like, work hard and make sure we're focused and at the task at hand. So as much of a confident boost as it was, we're very focused on making sure we got the job done. Exactly. And I don't know, like from an outsider perspective, it seems like to me anyways, that most people, like most of you guys seem to pick it up kind of later on in life. Would it be fair to say that it kind of is like in secondary school or towards college and that you guys actually entered Rowan or would you all have different experiences in that end of it? Um, I think me and Emily started quite young. We probably started the youngest. Like I was doing summer camps in municipal and then I joined commercial then once I was 12 because I wasn't allowed to join any younger. Yeah. yeah. I joined when I was 11. Yeah. So we'd been yeah. around the whole way up. I was around yeah. 12 I started. Yeah. Right. I, was, I was in secondary school as well. So yeah, I think it's, there are, you do come across some people who don't start until they're in university, but I think yeah. most people on our team bar maybe Phil maybe they we all would have started when we were in secondary school yeah and it's probably so to like the further you went on that you had that experience um so you're all big uh promoters of the big strong girl rhetoric (laughs) and where did that uh kind of come from and how important do you think that is to um increase the like participation and that kind of thing of the sport um I think it was just like we're basically on our way to camp one day and we we're like what are we going to do to entertain ourselves and keep us distracted from all the training we we're yeah. like oh let's set up like an instagram page and originally it was just meant to be something fun for all of us to do like a bit of a distraction and we we're like oh what we call it and we both kind of had a laugh we all kind of had a laugh about like how when we were younger you know the coaches would be like oh yeah she's a big strong girl like <laughs> you know like you know she's gonna be strong and um, she'll be good at the row and she'll she's be big yeah <laughs> yeah and um, about how we all at one point we were called big strong girls and you know when you're younger you don't know that that's a positive like that's what you want yeah. in sport like you want to be big you want to be strong like and um, whereas in some like in media and instagram and everything nowadays that can be shed such a negative light so i suppose we didn't really realize kind of what we were creating when we started creating it but it's been amazing like what we just started doing for fun. Like 
And as well, I think like for our group of heavyweights, there was so many of us training for the last few years. Like we weren't just, oh, the women's four, the women's pair, the women's single. Like it was a group of us. It was a crew. I think that was what we wanted to get out there. Like it was, you know, it wasn't just a single boat. It was just like the crew atmosphere and the team within our group. Yeah, and um, you talk there of the kind of stereotype in the media, you know, that girls are kind of afraid to have muscles, you know, body image wise. Um, do you think that's kind of true, first of all? And like, how damaging do you think that it, mindset is? Like, and it, like, I know you're working, let's say, even with the Instagram page, kind of ch- like going about changing that. Um, would you say that's a fair kind of assumption? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think there's like a shift towards yeah. lifted weights and it's definitely becoming more normalized, which is amazing. It's getting better. Honestly. It's definitely shifting out, yeah, going from like the teeth, really skinny body image towards like a more fit, athletic kind of look, which is great. But there is still like, I think, a stigma around it. And I do think a lot of young girls are afraid of that. Definitely. Yeah, I think, though, it's good that like, we're like making it visible that you know, there is a group of senior women rowing now in the country. You know, when we were growing up, we didn't have anyone really to look up to. There wasn't a group of heavyweight women rowing. So I think now for juniors coming up, it's something for them to, I suppose, aspire to. And like, I know I was probably this size when I was 13 years old, you know, and, you know, I suppose if I had seen back then, you know, that that was not like, not okay. Obviously I knew it was okay, but that it was so massive. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, That's what you want in rowing, you know? Um, yeah. like even when we go abroad sometimes we're like whoa look at the Germans or the Americans like yeah. they're like so much taller than us whereas you know we, we feel like we're quite big but um, <laughs> yeah I think it's just about kind of portraying that message that in sports like that's a good thing and that's what you want and not to be shying away from it yeah yeah and role models that kind of normalize that and you guys are definitely uh, definitely working on that and um, would there be would it be fair to say there's a lot of gym work that goes along with Rowan I'm sure like arm workouts and everything it's just there's a whole lot of it to it like um what would you like how how long would you spend in the water as opposed to in the gym like I'm sure you'd obviously prefer to be out in the water more than in the gym I'm sure but do you see it as like a necessary evil or like what what's your kind of take on that definitely necessary yeah um check the conditioning it's important just for a rehab point of view just make sure they're not getting injured while you're out on the water um, <laughs> We'd usually be doing gym about like three times a week anyway. And to be honest, I think we all kind of like a bit of a relief sometimes because we'll be on the water twice a day, almost every day, if not or else on an erg or a machine. So it is kind of nice having a bit of variety in the session and just having something completely kind of almost outside of rowing that you can work on and try and improve on that is actually really benefiting you as well in the boat. Mm. Okay. And then... Um... How, like you see on Instagram this last few weeks, everyone getting their Team Ireland gear. Um, how is, exciting is it now, looking forward, that you are so close to the games that, um, like, you know, it's nearly it's nearly here upon us, like. Yeah, definitely. Like, getting the kit was a big moment because even, like, <laughs> before you were even really into the sport, like, to be honest, I'd be more excited for the kit at the time than, like, the actual journey. But, no, it's really... <laughs> It was really exciting. It was a really good day for all of us. And, you know, it's kind of like make you feel very real now and that it's really quick approaching and it's just kind of building the excitement to it. And like, we're going to have that forever. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, really nice. so it's exciting. And then um, Afric, I know on Twitter, you've been very open and kind of showing like, let's say the brutal side of the sport and that for everyone that got the gear and is going to Tokyo or there's someone else that didn't. Um, mm-hmm. what, what would you talk to us a bit about that? Um, well, I think like like I said, when we started the Big Strong Girls page, like there was probably about 10 of us, I think. Yeah, and, um, you know, there's seven of us going with the women's uh, four pair and Sunita. But, you know, we probably had three or four other girls that didn't make a boat. And but like if it wasn't for them pushing us every day to, you know, for the competition for seats, we wouldn't be where we are today. And um we do have Tara, she's our, our reserve, so she's traveling with us and we're really lucky to have her as well. Um, you know, that is a really tough job for her to watch us, you know, like when we're out preparing, like, you know, we are quite focused and motivated at the task at hand. And I'm sure for her, some days it is hard to go out and to do the training, but you'd never notice it at all with her. She's always in such a good mood and she really lifts the spirits of the team. 
Um, but yeah, I think, you know, like, unfortunately it's just, it's, it's sport and not everyone makes it. And, you know, I'm sure for people like Tara, like it'll only make her stronger and the next games are only three years away. So, you know, I'm definitely think it'll stand to her in Paris. Yeah, definitely. And it's a great credit to the team as a whole, I suppose. So, um, being, I suppose, slightly older than the other girls in the group, would you say you're the leader or do you guys kind of share that responsibility around? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely the boss. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm questions. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I think like we're all like quite independent. We all have our own personalities and, you know, we all bring different things to the boat. And I think even it depends on the day, like some days. Uh, some people might just be having an off day like mood wise whereas you know we have three other people to kind of pick up the spirits and help each other along so yeah I definitely think we all just contribute um, differently um, personality wise and then obviously depending on how we're all feeling on the day. Yeah and then coming from that kind of intense atmosphere and um, what do you guys like to do as a crew to unwind? I know Imer you said before your guilty pleasure is watching 90 Day Fiance I don't know if that <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, my camera's on there. Yeah, you're back. Um, yeah, basically any reality TV show I'll be up and watching like too hot to handle on Netflix moments and we've already yeah. finished it. Like. Yeah. So <laughs> Love Island, um, Below Deck, literally all these brainless programs like <laughs> we're, we're stuck to them. You can't beat them though to just switch no. off like they're good, like Netflix is an endless supply of them if you watch it, yeah. <laughs> Um, so then, Emily, I know you won the bronze in the 2020 European uh, under three, under 23 championships in the women's pair. I'm just kind of curious, um, how is it decided what kind of numbers uh, on the team you guys enter into? I'm sure there's trials or something, but then what attracted you to the four more than the pair, let's say? Um, we actually don't get to say in what mode we end up in at all. Okay. So kind of the whole the whole year we're always rotating like different partners and pairs and in fours like we've all rode with every single person on the team. There's no kind of set crew from the get go. And then as the year goes on, they kind of decide like, oh, what boats will we consider sending? And then they kind of we okay. all the different combinations like continuously for weeks and weeks until we kind of have a final trial and then it's kind of settled who will be where. So last year, like as as it went, I was in a pair with Tara, and then this year, like it was all mixed around again, and I ended up in four. And but like we're so lucky as well because whoever ended up in that four it would have been fast we were just like the margins were so tight between us all as well so it's definitely like a group effort for every boat that's out there there's like every other girl is contributing to the speed yeah so the combinations are kind of worked on I suppose and then would yeah. anybody kind of be working towards a specific um like you know single or double or four or whatever or would it just as you say it's kind of just everything is tried out and then just see what happens. Yeah, it's so Sunita would stay in the same boat, obviously. Yeah. But um, the rest of us, yeah, it's kind of, we test out everything and see, you know, what could potentially go fast and what might work. And we just make sure we tr cover all corners and just try everything. And then it's definitely worked out for you guys. I mean, seeing photos of you, uh, like even just like hugging or embracing after the race, um, you obviously get on, but like just how close as a group would you say you are? Not that close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it's just it's we hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think like we're all quite close as a whole, like the whole group. But I think definitely since trials, um, a couple of months ago at this stage, like you know we've stopped rotating. We're now in our set crews. I think we have all um come a lot closer, just purely based on the amount of time we spent together. You know. This is our second like six week camp essentially in the last probably three months almost. And so we've just done such extended time uh, away together that, yeah, we've no choice but to be close really. <laughs> yeah, just even the experiences that we've all gone through together now, like coming up to qualifying, the pressure of that and qualifying and the joy of that, like mm -hmm. going through those kind of like lifetime experiences together, I think really bonds us. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm sure that will only uh, improve when the Olympic Games does roll around. So Team Ireland have selected, I think it's 13 to compete across six boats at the Games. So surely that suggests that rowing in this country is in a fantastic place uh, these days, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I think this is this is the biggest team we've ever sent. And we've gone from one boat to London to three boats in Rio and now six boats in Tokyo. So 
it's definitely a uh, positive um it's going up yeah and then um this was just a funny one Fiona I came across <laughs> in my <laughs> research but uh going from Galway to New York uh, in your sport yeah. I mean what was that kind of like I I think it says it all in a quote I saw I think it was an interview with your university you were talking about the sky rise buildings from the old oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if this one come up a lot but it just made me laugh when I think you said like you know Galway maybe has six story buildings or Dublin has 10 or something and then you're yeah. like first year you used to think it was going to fill on drop yeah. I'll never forget it was um there's a apartment block by the boathouse in college in New York and it was about 20 or 30 something stories at the time like I used to roll by so fast underneath it, I was terrified. It was such a shock. But it was like, yeah, it was a great life experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we don't get out much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, New York, see buildings like they're all just taking me places. Um, but yeah, no, it was good. Just really enjoyed it. Like the experience. Yeah, I think it was <laughs> about like the magnitude of the difference between the two. Yeah. Stars. <laughs> yeah, I was grateful that Rowan was able to give me that opportunity and all the current opportunities and life experiences. Yeah. So I have a lot to be grateful for. Yeah, and um, the Women's Four is an actual event. hasn't been in the Olympics for nearly 30 years, I think, and its numbers have suffered in entries when it was dropped in 1996. Um, does that show to you that the Olympics is the be-all and end-all for a lot of athletes? I mean, when it was taken off, the event kind of dropped and now it's back and the increase is on the it's on the rise again and um, would you say that's the case like is the olympics the be all and end all like the pinnacle for athletes um i think it is but i think when it was taken off the program a lot of countries obviously stopped focusing on it just because mm. you know uh yeah you know when you're working throughout olympias the main focus is to qualify but um I think sometimes like people put a lot of emphasis on the Olympics and, you know, as cheesy as it might sound, like it is all about the journey too. And, mm. you know, we are so excited to get there in racing, but, you know, so far we have had an amazing year like as well. So um, we have that like to be thankful for too, um, as well as hopefully the experience that's going to come. Yeah. And then just on that, the final question, I know you're saying it's all about the journey, but uh, just how um, great would it be to get on the podium I suppose and is that the aim for this summer's games yeah like that's definitely the aim but like you know I think as a team we're very um, process or focused yeah is, you know yeah. we try not to think too much about the outcome um, because we don't want to want to get carried away and distracted like we're just kind of focusing on like the days training ahead of us and then the weeks training and then you know and so on like tick off the list as we go on so I think yeah you know when the time comes yeah we we, we obviously hope to end up there but we're not really focusing on too much that too much at the moment yeah just taking it day by day so I think yeah. uh, that might be a good place to wrap up thanks a million for joining us today and best of luck in Tokyo guys thank you, thank you so much